Okay, thank you our beloved MC Norisa Tamila. So, before we start our webinar, let's have a big introduction for our panelists. So, our one and only panelist for today, MC Muhammad Farhan B. Muhammad Tahir. He is an alumni of UTM Skudai, which is a super senior in bioinformatics. He graduates from UTM with a Bachelor of Computer Science majoring in bioinformatics, awarded with a Dean List in 2017. He did his internship in Novocraft Technologies from September 2016 until January 2017 and after graduating, he continued to work as a bioinformatics programmer at the same company until now. Currently, Encik Fahan had already served Novocraft Technologies for three years and a half. His job scope are uh, mainly in bioinformatics programmer uh, of Novocraft, mainly develop bioinformatics pipeline to automate the bioinformatics analysis and his life motto is every day is a new day. If you make if you make a mistake today, you can always correct it tomorrow. That's make him to stay positive and optimistic. Actually, me as a bioinformatics student also do not have uh, a clear view or don't understand what a bioinformatics programmer does in his daily job. So, but don't worry, we will know it later. Uh, so, without further ado, I give this floor to Encik Pahan. Encik Pahan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, thank you to uh, the moderator and MC for introducing me and thank you to Pesaka for inviting me as a speaker to for this session. So uh, let's uh, let me start and take a look to my slide. Okay, so uh, before I start, I would like to introduce good, good evening and Assalamualaikum to everyone who in this session. So today I would like to give a talk about a day as a bioinformatics uh, programmer. But before I go further about what I will talk about, what is the detail is, I would like to introduce a bit. Yeah, uh, moderator already introduced introduce me, but it just some a bit of uh, mine. So my name is Farhan Tahir. You can call me Farhan if you want. So I'm currently uh, working in Novocraft Technologies as a bioinformatics programmer which uh, I build uh, and develop a bioinformatics pipeline, uh, which can automatic the analysis from the, from the start process until the end result of analysis. If you have any question in the future, uh, you can, you then hesitate to contact me through farhan at novocraft.com. This is my email. Uh, so uh, the topic, this is the topic that uh, I will cover today, which is, I believe, and I hope, these topics will help in answering any of your question. There are possibility that maybe, for example, first year and second year uh, have some question why we enroll this bioinformatic courses. What is it? And maybe third year and fourth year have some question. What will they do after they graduate uh, as a bioinformatics graduated student? So I hope uh, my session will give you some overview and answer to all your questions. So I would like to introduce our company first. So uh, I am working in a Novocraft Technologies. We are a multidisciplinary team providing innovative and accurate bioinformatics tools and services. And we are focusing on NGS space. So when we talk about a multidisciplinary, it means that it means that in our company, there is no only one bioinformatics role only. We have a multiple role. We have a statistician. We have a bioinformatics, we have a software developer, we have a bioinformatician, we have a analysis uh, person and etc. There are so many roles. So uh, there is no such thing that, okay, since uh, our company is a bioinformatics company, then all inside the company are bioinformatics person. Yeah, so it's not that, it's not right. So this is the products and services that we are currently built or already developed which uh, in the products, we have a software or tools. Uh, software or tools is uh, our products that require our customer to have a little bit programming skill or programming knowledge. So in a software or tools, we have a Novo Align that uh, mapping the reads to the reference genome. We have a Novo Sort, uh, which sorting the, the reads depends on each position. And we have, when we have a Novo LR package, we have a Novo Splice that focusing on RNA analysis, if you ever heard here before. Okay, that's about the products that require our customer to have some uh, programming skill. But 
we also provide uh, another product uh, focusing on our customer that doesn't have any programming skill, which is analysis platform. Analysis platform is our product that what they will see is just user interface, a very friendly user interface. Just drag and drop the file, just click the button there, click the button run and analysis, then they will get the result. So look how easy it is to be used. So this is very suitable to those who didn't have any programming programming uh, knowledge, but they have some biolog biological knowledge. So we have a novel work uh, that focusing on researchers that uh, want to do a research paper or research analysis. And we also have a novel clinic that are focusing on uh, uh, our customer, like the one who works in clinical testing or clinical research analysis. And then we proceed to the services that we provide. We do a consultancy, we do a data analysis, and we do seminar, talk, and webinar, just like what I do right now. So uh, our tools, uh, Novo Online, had over 200 licenses globally that had been distributed. That's about our product. OK, this is a snapshot of uh, Novo Works. Uh, if you look, it is very user friendly. You just need to click a button that you want. Uh, you can run analysis by clicking the button. And you just sit back and relax and wait for the Novo, Novo Works to complete its analysis. We also have a Novo Clinic. This is a snapshot that focusing on uh, clinical analysis. Okay, this is uh, the one I mentioned earlier, a multidisciplinary of our team. We have a multiple roles, not only bioinformatician, not only a bioinformatics programmer. Even we have a software developer also and uh, business development or sales. Okay, that's about our company. Finish of that. Now we are start to touch a bit regarding our main content, which is bioinformatics. But before I touch that bioinformatics thing, uh, we need to know what is DNA sequencing first because DNA sequencing and bioinformatics is quite related to each other. So we need to get some overview of what DNA sequencing is. So DNA sequencing uh, basically is a process of uh, determining the nucleic acid sequence uh, from the sample, which later can be used uh, for further analysis. Uh, for example, I give uh, a situation of COVID-19. Uh, we see our uh, we see the staff or we see uh, the nurse took our sample from nasal and throat and when they pull it out we can see only a liquid or mucus but there is we can't see any dna sequence yet we just see the liquid but when they do this dna sequencing they put it in a machine then from that we can see uh, detail the dna sequence of that sample we can see a a c c adenine adenine thymine cytosine Inside our, inside our computer. So what I mean is DNA sequencing help us to get overview. What is the DNA sequence of our sample? Okay, I would like to walk you through the reality of DNA capacity right now. If we go at the earlier stage of 2000, whereby when the first generation of DNA sequencing was widely used, it is uh, the data capacity are still less than a tera base pair, still very low, very low. But when it comes to uh, at the end of 2010, when there is a second generation of DNA sequencing had been introduced at 2010, it is, we can see the data capacity is increased steeply, which it can more to one peta base pair, which is quite large, quite vast when the second generation introduced. Then we proceed to a 2015 here when uh, the third generation of um, DNA sequencing uh, been introduced. It is expected that the data capacity of this uh, uh, in, in the world will go up to one data best pair. Look how big our data of uh, DNA sequencing, how big of our data to be used for bioinformatics analysis, how big we need to manage the database of bioinformatics so it's not over one so who will do this job of course us as a bioinformatics we are the one who will use all this dna sequencing we do the analysis for it so that it will not left over it is so our main are really important here we also need to manage the database of bioinformatics so that it will not overwhelm yeah it's our generation it is my generation and your generation which is uh, we are currently at 2025 already and our data is really large. 
So beware of that future. And this is uh, some of the projects that contribute to the uh, increasing of the data uh, of DNA sequencing. Now I start to touch about bioinformatics uh, thing. Uh, uh, before I start uh, bioinformatics, okay, I would like to tell you some experience uh, of mine, uh, some story. Okay, when I start to enroll myself as a bioinformatics student at UTM, uh, before before in 2013, 2013 when I need to choose I, uh, my UPU, so. At first, I, why I choose bioinformatics? Because I like to see a bio term in front of bioinformatics, the bio, B-I-O thing, because I love bio at that time. And I didn't know that it's actually combination of biology and computer. So uh, the thing is, uh, but when I enroll to these uh, courses, uh, I understand that the beautiful, the magic of these courses, which is it combined the biological and uh, computer power into one, Scope, which is bioinformatics. So, the term of bioinformatics itself, it is a uh, implementation of computing technologies in understanding and analyzing biological data. Uh, which is, I believe, uh, some of you will thinking, why do we need a combination of biology and computer to be combined into one? Why can we let it just bio as bio, computer as bio, a eh, computer as computer? So, ah. Uh, the thing is you need to see here if we go before if we go before uh, around 10 years before or 20 years before when there is no de no development of computer yet maybe at the early stage of computer and the biological analysis are 100 percent in the laboratory it is predictable that about one analysis or one project uh it required up to five years to complete one analysis but when we go to this era when the uh, computer power had half the biology, which is bioinformatics uh, are in here, one analysis or one project can be completed uh, is in only one day or maybe one week. Look how fast is it. So this is the important the bioinformatics. We implement, we apply the power of computer, we apply the power of algorithm in uh, our coding to speed up the process of analysis. So bioinformatics is really feasible nowadays. Okay, I, and one example, okay, uh, again for COVID-19 example, okay, uh, uh, COVID-19 had been diagnosed on 2019, okay, 2019, then on 2020, the development of vaccine are started and we already can use the vaccine and the vaccine are uh, assumed uh, as uh, completed and stable on 2021. Let's assume at this time there is no computer, or maybe uh, there is no implementation of bioinformatics in the development of vaccine. We might not have the vaccine yet this year. So we might have maybe 2025. So this is uh, what I mentioned that bioinformatics is really useful nowadays. Most of the world are uh, look at this course. So it is an implementation of computer to for us to help uh, to analyze and solving biological questions. Okay. Now I would like to talk about a general bioinformatics workflow. From start, we get the sample until we get the result. This is what I do in a Novocraft. So basically, when we have a sample extraction, no matter from blood, for example, uh, from nasal or from uh, throat, anything, uh, we have a sample. Then what we will do is we will do a library preparation. What uh, library preparation do is it will uh, make our samples uh, being, ready, being re ready, being prepared, being prepared to the DNA sequencing. So if let's say we already do a library preparation on our sample, then we assume that, okay, this sample are ready to be sequenced by our, uh, by our machine. So then we can put it in our sequencing machine. We, we let the sequencing process uh, complete, then we can see the DNA sequence in our computer. So look, from the sample of liquid or I don't know what type, what form of sample, we can see the DNA sequence from in our computer. Let, let's say you take your blood sample, then you put, into, you put it into your sequencing, you can get your DNA sequence. But the analysis is not, is not stopped here. We need to do some analysis on this DNA because as of now, what we see is just the sequence of adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So what we need to do is, bioinformatics analysis 
we need to do analysis for that DNA sequence. Then last but not least, we need to do a report generation, which is uh, for this one, uh, for, uh, for the result, uh, uh, with this report generation, we can make a uh, normal user, normal people, which is not come uh, in this bioinformatics field, understand the result. So it will be useful for them. So this is a general workflow. And the scope that I do in Novocraft is just a bioinformatics analysis and report generation. Uh, the sequencing, uh, I, I didn't do in Novocraft. The sequencing, there are, there are some other company that do the sequencing, then some of them may be passed to us for us to do the analysis for them. All right, uh, let me drink first. I am quite... Thank you. So this is uh, some of uh, bioinformatics uh, focus area or scope uh, that you can maybe for your final year project, you can choose uh, either one. Uh, this is some of it, but there are so many scope that we can do analysis with that. And now this is uh, my uh, my specific task which uh, in Novocraft, which is a bioinformatics pipeline development. What is bioinformatics pipeline? So it is actually a complete set of bioinformatics process from one tool uh, to another until we get uh, the final result. So uh, yeah, for more understand, okay, for example, we have a flow chart here. Let's say I got, we got a DNA sequence uh, from a machine, sequence machine. So uh, we have we get the DNA A A A C C T. Then this DNA sequence uh, from our computer will be passed to a software A, and then uh, passed to the bioinformatics tools B, and passed to the tool C until it's up to the analysis. How many tools or how many bioinformatics tools are required to complete one uh, one complete pipeline? So until we can get the result generation, it doesn't matter. If you do the uh, RNA analysis, if you do the metagenomics analysis, virus analysis, most of it uh, will have uh, a specific pipeline that can be referred on, that can be used. So I am the one who uh, make, uh, when user put their data set, then it is automatically run a tools A until tools D with a, with a good parameter implement until they get the accurate result. But basically they are a bit challenged uh, in my challenges in my uh, pipeline development, what is the challenges? Okay, during my task of doing bioinformatics pipeline, uh, the challenges is how I can make the result is accurate. This is important because if my result is not accurate, it will affect uh, the passion of our customer. For example, we have a customer uh, that uh, their analysis is one to detect whether their patient have a uh, expected to have a, a cancer, a breast cancer, for example, breast cancer. So I need to develop a pipeline that uh, can detect a breast cancer of a patient. What if uh, at any part of my pipeline, I make a small mistake or my parameter is not accurate, then supposedly they have uh, a breast cancer, but I uh, miscalculated it and I mentioned it doesn't have a breast cancer. So. Uh, this is the challenges that I need to overcome. So how I overcome is that I need to do a literature review. I need to do uh, most of the reads so that I can get, uh, I can compare the result of mine and the result of them. So it uh, it will make sure my uh, pipeline is accurate to be used, are uh, safe to use. So this is the experience, uh, sorry, the challenges that I face in my uh, job scope. So that's the bioinformatics pipeline. Uh, this is uh, some skills. Uh, this is my workspace. I love Naruto. <laughs> so I just, uh, even I have a, a, a mini figure of Naruto there. So maybe it gives me a spirit to do coding thing and etc. So as a bioinformatics, it's uh, really good for us to have a bioinformatics, uh, eh, sorry, programming language because we are implement uh, the computer power uh, to do the analysis part. Uh, so uh, we uh, normally what company one is uh, uh, normally yeah, uh, not all not all company most of it uh, required uh, the user uh, have a best script knowledge because uh, most of it using Linux uh, Linux uh, operating system which required of us to get a, a best script or R Python uh, that is the programming uh, language so this is important. And the second one that I need to understand, or maybe you as a bioinformatics need to know, is a bioinformatics DB. 
uh, this is the place where we get the data set. This is the place where we get uh, any important information uh, regarding uh, bioinformatics. Uh, we have NCBI, Ensemble. There, there are so many databases here. Just you need to get familiar with it. And we also have a bioinformatics uh, software tools that uh, we need to, to know how to handle. For example, I need to know how Novo Align and Novo Sort uh, working, IGV, GATK, and etc. And last but not least, we need to have a knowledge how to literature review, how to get uh, the how to read the uh, others journal or others research paper, how to Google, uh, how to googling skill also important for us. So this is uh, the one that I need, or maybe you also will require. Okay, now I already talked about a theory. Now I want to bring you to case study, which is uh, from here, you can try to implement uh, what uh, bioinformatics can be used for real life. So in here, I make one case study here, uh, case study that I I use the data set uh, from NCBI. There are, there are two test data set. Uh, one is 168. The second one is 770. Uh, OK. Um, this data set was took from NCBI. What I will going to do with these two data set? OK, this is the aim and methodology of my case study. With these two data set, I want to identify uh, the, presence, the presence of SARS-CoV-2 uh, in the sample. So uh, SARS-CoV-2 is a, a sequence that related to a COVID-19. So I want to check whether in these two have a COVID-19 sequence that related to COVID-19 or not. So I will implement bioinformatics thing to achieve this. So my methodology is I do a screening and classifying the abundance of viral sequence in the samples and then I visualize it using uh, several bioinformatics tools. Let's uh, take a look at the flowchart of my case study. Okay, now I have one, uh, I have two raw reads, I have two data set of sequence. Uh, then I will use it in, uh, I will pass it to a read pre-processing using FastQC. Why I need to uh, read pre-process first? Because at first, when we have a raw read, the reads itself might have uh, some bad uh, DNA sequence uh, which we need to remove it out before we do analysis. So that's why we need to pre-process our data set first. So anything uh, redundant sequence or anything uh, bad sequence will be removed out and the one that left is only a good, a good quality read. Then when we finish doing uh, reads pre-processing, we will have a good quality read. Okay, with this good quality read, I will do screening and classifying. Okay, in here, I will map uh, the reads, the two reads, to the database that already developed by uh, our bioinformatics community uh, that contain the human and virus database. We we mapping that and we search for the consensus whether it hits or not. Then when uh, we map it, then we can visualize uh, the result uh, and do conclusion by using a uh, recent refuge and pavian. So this is the flowchart of how I implement uh, how I implement the bioinformatics uh, part in detecting the COVID-19. Okay, so uh, let's assume we already do a rich pre-process. Let's say we already do a screening and classifying. Now we will focus on the result. So let's take a look for these two results. Uh, Let's check whether 168 have a COVID-19, a positive COVID-19 or 770 are positive COVID-19, uh, both are negative. So let's check a corona chart here. If you can see here, uh, this is corona chart come from the centrifuge after we finish the analysis. Uh, if we can, uh, a small the size, we can see that there are 95% of coronavirus 2 sequence detected in this sample 95 percent which is quite large and when and we can assume that uh corona uh this sample have a sequence that related to covid 19. so uh there are five percent of homo sapiens which is human detected uh yeah of course because uh the sample uh was took from human so there may be 
uh, some of the DNA sequence are come uh, from the host or from human. Let's take a look on another uh, Corona chart, 770. Okay, let me uh, zoom out first. If we can see here, there are 94% of virus, but not coronavirus, not corona 2 virus, but influenza B virus. So there is uh, there is no uh, sequence uh, re that related to COVID-19 detected in this sample. But uh, this patient need to beware because he have influenza B virus, still need to go hospital for medication. And again, uh, there are some uh, homo sapiens uh, percentage there, uh, which is human DNA, uh, still detected because uh, it comes from the human host. So uh, this is simplified result. We can get that 95% of severe acute respiratory syndrome co coronavirus 2 sequence are found in 168, and there are nothing there are no percentage of coronavirus 2 detected in 770 so look how i i how i implement it now i can generate the result so this is the second uh this is the second uh visualization uh, using pavian before this i use recent reviews then in order for me to support to make the, to make sure oh my result is accurate so i need to do the second uh result analysis which is using a pavian so uh for pavian it use heat map table if you can see here uh there are two sample 168 and 770 so we can see that 78 percent of coronavirus 2 detected in 168 but there is zero percentage of coronavirus 2 detected in 770 look this is how we, as a bioinformatics, want to verify uh, our whether our uh, analysis are correct or not. We use a different different tools and we do a comparison. Or maybe we can refer to any other journal or research paper in order for us to compare. So if we match, so that our analysis is accurate. And this pipeline can be used for any further uh, analysis. So do you understand how I implement the bioinformatics in? solving the biology analytic uh, biology uh, issue so this is one example basically in novocraft there are so many pipelines not only this this coronavirus i do rna analysis i do uh, uh, i want to check uh, microbes uh, bacteria inside a body inside human body there are so many analysis that i done and this is one of it Okay, this is a, a conclusion. After we do some supporting, uh, supporting system, we can, uh, we can sure that there are SARS-CoV-2 detected in uh, 168 and 770 are free from COVID-19. Yeah. Okay, that's about uh, case study. Let me drink first. <laughs> thirsty, thirsty. Ah. I hope I'm not too fast because uh, the way I talk is sometimes when I get excited, I walk like, I, I talk like a bullet. And now I start to breathe in slowly, slowly and talk again. Okay, about a bio, uh, about bio, sorry, about a future in a bioinformatics. So basically, when you are graduated as a bioinformatics, please, please, please don't limit uh, your mind uh, with uh, ideology that what you will work is uh, the company that related to bioinformatics itself only. No, it's not like that. If you open up your mind, basically there are so many works that you can do. You can do, if you can see here, as we learn uh, some of programming language, as we learn some of the pro programming language, we can work to any company that have uh, a software development as their main business because we have a R program, we have a R programming language, we have a C++ programming language, the most powerful programming language. So if let's say we didn't have uh, maybe our, what we call it, our priority, I don't like uh, programming because uh, it's quite uh, complicated. I just want to be a bio, a bio thing, which is maybe I can do a DNA sequencing. So you can be a biologist. You can do something like uh, you can work in a clinical or hospital that uh, 
have a DNA analysis uh, as their main a business also. We also have a statistician because we learn how to use our language, which is uh, analysis, a uh, programming language, so we can be statistician. So the key point here, you just need, uh, you just uh, need to enlarge your thinking of bioinformatics. Don't limit it to the only bioinformatics. So it's up to you. You want to be as a bioinformatics, you can. You can. You want to be a hundred percent of bio uh, computer uh, computer programmer, also can. Uh, in UTM, in my experience, in UTM, we learn, uh, I'm not sure for other university, in UTM during my era, uh, we learn 70% of it uh, a programming language, 70%, and 30% of it uh, biology, which is we, most of it we learn a theory. Then uh, from that, we try to implement that 30% of biological to our 70% of uh, programming skill. So uh, that's, uh, that's why uh, I start to... Work, I, I like to work in, in Novocraft as a bioinformatics programmer because I like to do a coding and I like to implement that bioinformatics because it is magic we can implement a biology and computer in one set. Okay, talk about Novocraft. Uh, I, there are some gossip how I can get attached with Novocraft. So <laughs> not a gossip, just some um, story of me. Okay, basically I graduate on 2017 in, in UTM. Uh, but on, on 2016, I need to find my internship. So because yeah, we, uh, we at UTM, we need to have internship uh, one semester uh, uh, at the first semester of fourth year. So at that time, I just need to know lah. I just need to know uh, in Malaysia what of bioinformatics company are uh, there uh, for me to enroll as an internship student. So what I do is with the power of the Google skill, I just type in the Google. Bioinformatics company in Malaysia, Park. Then uh, Novocraft is one of the list. So I just click, then I just uh, send the email to them because they provide the email how to apply. Uh, then poof, I got I got that uh, I got that position as a, an internship, which is I need to learn. I just need to learn. So Alhamdulillah on that time on that time. So I do I just follow my uh, supervisor instruction. Uh, name Azam. So uh, he taught me the most about the reality of bioinformatics. Then I finished my internship. Okay, uh, fast forward, I graduate. I graduate, then I need to find a job for mine. So I just text Azam. I just text my supervisor. Azam, uh, do we, do Novocraft have uh, a position for me to apply? I text first because I uh, just want to some clarify. So then he, he asked, Oh, Farhan, you can apply. We have some position. Uh, maybe can fit with your knowledge or because Azam already maybe already uh, uh, teach me. So maybe he understood me uh, a while uh, before this. So uh, then I just I send the emails the second time with my resume to apply for the job. That's why how I attach Novocraft from intern, then proceed to the job uh, position. So the thing is, we can get, uh, if any one of you have uh, enrolled your internship, you can just try to text your supervisor. Just uh, ask about uh, if there is any position. If you love that uh, internship uh, task, but if you, during in your internship, you didn't think that you love, so you can try to add the job. So what you need is just text uh, your supervisor, ask about the uh, position, if I uh, have or not. Then if, okay, that might be a chance for you just to be the one, uh, what you want. So that's my tip. If you have done your internship, try to communicate with supervisor. Okay, this is some of the tips uh, for the resume as a bioinformatics. Uh, most of company, different, com different company have different uh, job scope or needs or requirements. So before you do uh, your, before you do job hunting or job searching, Identify yourself first what your what your power is. Let's say you power in uh, C++ programming or you power in uh, RNA analysis or you power in R language and programming, for example. Uh, then you, you had screening yourself. You have that skill. Then you identify the company that related to your skill. For example, uh, one company, for example, company A. They require uh, a staff that have a C++. Then you have that skill. So this is the very good, uh, uh, what we call it, the very good uh, peluang, <laughs> the very good chances for you to get this job. 
So identify first uh, the job scope, whether it match with your skills or not. I hope you have uh, a skill that uh, most of company require, for example, C++ or RNA analysis. Uh, so if you have that, you just click a uh, company that require uh, this kind of skill. So it will list out, then you just can apply. Okay, the second one is as a bioinformatics, you need to specify a programming language. Yes, I know you learn so many programming programming language. So you need to specify so that a uh, company or uh, no, okay, oh, this person have uh, how know how to write JavaScript. So uh, I think uh, it will be a good candidate. So you specify if you have five uh, programming language uh, that you master, you just need to list out and it will be good for you. Then need to specify a bioinformatics project that you might had done before, maybe your final year project, something like that. Or maybe a bioinformatics pipeline that had been used uh, by you during your final year project. This is for in order for you to get a job, eh? not uh, from first year and second year, you need to learn first what is bioinformatics itself. So for, the, for those who third year and fourth year, you can start to uh, implement your final year project as your, as your, what we call it, as your skill to implement uh, the job. Then uh, you need to specify uh, the soft skill. Soft skill also important, whether you have, a, you can work uh, as a team or not, you can have a high spirit when you talk in a, uh, in a, in front of many people and etc. So that's also important and a bonus skill if you have uh, that. Uh, mostly, you just need to uh, join some of uh, what we call it community in UTM or other university, for example, Pesaka. So it can build up your skill and you can use that, use that as uh, your power uh, power resume. Then last but not least, if have, if have, you need to give a proof attachment such as uh, Git repository, uh, video, or maybe you have create one uh, software, you just need to give the link of that software. So they can get, okay, the, these people correct uh, uh, talk, uh, these people put in the resume uh, is 100% good uh, and corrected and accurate. He already have their software, for example. Okay, let's see the good word and the bad word of uh, how to write a resume. Okay, let's say, let's say you have a C++ uh, programming skill. Please, uh, Please uh, don't write something like this. I have a knowledge uh, to write the C++ program. Please avoid to write something like this. But what you need to do is you need to make sure that the word is powerful. For example, I managed to write a complete bioinformatics program named as a, bio, uh, as a pair and adapter finder using a C++ language and had been used by someone at all in his research, for example. So how you implement that skill? Uh, so you put it in your resume. So when the company, uh, when we as a company look at this kind of work, we know your skills are already being used uh, before this and it can be help us uh, in our company, for example. Then, for example, I, I for those who already done the final year project, for example, I successfully published my research paper uh, for my final year project entitled Effect of uh, E. coli towards the metagenomics abundance of human gut. For example, this is an uh, example title. By implementing what type of pipeline, what uh, programming language, something like that. So it will supporting uh, your, uh, your skills. So this is some of tips from mine. There are so many tips you can get out there, but this is just a little bit from me. Uh, now we are proceed to a future in bioinformatics. Well, 245. I'm quite fast, but okay. Uh, now we are focusing on future in bioinformatics. So to those who want to try uh, to contact with us to get a position, uh, you can directly go to uh, Novocraft Technologies here. Uh, we have a website. Then you can directly go to opportunities. There are if you look if you look here. There are some uh, opportunities that we are looking forward, a bioinformatician, algorithm developer, software developer, even interns also we, we can take as our CSR, community service. So uh, please don't hesitate just to email us at office at novocraft.com, your resume, using any tips, you can Google tips uh, of your resume from Google, don't worry, then send to office at novocraft.com. We will look uh, to your uh, resume. 
uh, for those yang nak intern uh, for those who want to do intern for for those who want to look uh, for their future jobs so you can try us okay now the conclusion Okay, what is my honest opinion about uh, bioinformatics? Uh, that most of you think that bioinformatics is not powerful nowadays. Okay, this is my honest opinion. I am thinking that bioinformatics basically, it is a magic. <laughs> Again, I talk, I, I use this, this term, it is a magical course. It is a powerful course whereby we can transform from the biological adenine, thymine, uh, guanine, cytosine to a binary code of computer 10010 there is no other course there is no other course that can transform this kind of uh, transformation yeah from dna sequence we transfer it to our pc then we do the analysis then from that we can provide a healthy life to our community to our family to our friends we can provide a happy quality life to them looks how beautiful it is so uh, biological, they will 100% uh, uh, in wet lab and they might be use our tools or our bioinformatics software to help them to speed up their analysis. But we as a bioinformatics, the way we implement the computer is a beautiful thing in the world. Wow. So <laughs> I hope my, uh, my honest op opinion uh, will give you a spirit to still continue in learning a bioinformatics. Please uh, try to learn uh, what is bioinformatics first be before you want to change your course. Maybe some of you are started to thinking, I want to change to the course, maybe mathematics or biological or computer directly. So uh, let uh, give one year to two years for you to understand a bit what is bioinformatics. Then you will find what you looking for. Uh, gitu. Okay, so with that, I end my session. Uh, thank you, everyone, to hear some my maybe as for me just a little uh, sharing. There are many of them uh, outside are uh, more good by informatics uh, compared to me. But I just share as uh, an alumni of uh, UTM. I love UTM. I love any university. I love by informatics. Okay, thank you. Uh, with that, I open up to any question and answer. Uh, oh yeah, before that, uh, this is uh email that you can contact for uh, any jobs and if you have any future question you can directly contact me at farhan at novocraft.com maybe if you didn't tak sempat uh, ask in here you can ask uh, in this email so with that i pass uh, the email to the moderator again for to continue the session thank you so much for hearing assalamualaikum and good evening okay thank you Encik Fahar, for your wonderful and informative sharing <laughs> So Welcome. before I forget, uh, so before I forgot, the link for registration form uh, will appear in a minute. So stay seated and don't forget to register to get certificate for us. So let's move on to the Q&A session. So if you have any question to ask to Encik Fahad right now, so you get you you guys can write on the comment section below in the Facebook. So uh, we we will wait uh, uh, for a minute if there are any question from the viewers. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, we have comment from Ali Azhar. Okay. okay, salam Encik Farhan. Nak tanya betul ke kos bayi informatik ni tak banyak peluang pekerjaan dekat Malaysia tapi banyak dekat Jepun. Okay, so let's me speak in Malay lah. Okay, sebab oh, saya faham oh. sebab contohlah kita ada ramai kawan-kawan kita yang dalam kos ni yang uh -huh. ada duduk Johor, ada duduk dekat Terengganu, Kelantan. So, betul -betul. Uh, tak banyak pekerjaan bayi informatik di negeri-negeri lain kecuali di Selangor, di Kuala Lumpur. Jadi Encik Farhan macam mana? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So, okay. jawab orang Melayu lah eh? Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. So, saya jawab dia tanya orang Melayu. Uh, Cik siapa? Cik Alia. Okay. So, saya pun jawab orang Melayu lah. Kita hormat menghormati. Eh, saya cakap orang Melayu ke? Oh, betul. Okay. okay. Alright. Okay. Uh, Cik Alia, terima kasih atas soalan. Uh, terima kasih juga uh, Haidi untuk uh, tu. So, ya yeah, betul. Saya pun sejak dulu uh, didoktrin dengan uh, uh, Malaysia tak banyak company sebab Kalau as a bioinformatics company, basically ada beberapa company tapi minta maaf cakap kalau dekat Terengganu macam soalan tu macam Terengganu yang macam uh, ya yeah, something like negara, negeri lain uh, uh, macam kurang lah tapi for Lembah Kelang like KL, uh, Selangor, PJ uh, ada banyak uh, company yang 
uh, related to bioinformatics, saya boleh uh, bagi satu uh, uh, beberapa company uh, kalau yang pendengar semua nak dengar uh, which is company ni pun uh, dia macam beri juga untuk saya validation untuk saya membenarkan untuk memberitahulah okay first Novocraft lah uh, we have Novocraft, dia sebenarnya banyak cuma jangan sempitkan with uh, bio, uh, bioinformatics uh, tak banyak kerja so we have Novocraft, uh, kita ada Novocraft kita ada juga uh, Malaysian Genome Institute uh, also by informatics punya company tu uh, kita ada juga Institute Medical Research IMR tu pun by informatics company juga kita ada uh, Malaysian Genome Institute pun uh, uh, apa company yang by informatics juga My Genome Institute for example dia ada banyak cuma kalau cara nak google dia maybe uh, cara uh, kita nak google kita jangan google by informatics uh, in Malaysia because okay company yang buat DNA sequencing also dia pun salah satu uh, company yang bioinformatics tapi dia maybe tak mention as a bioinformatics uh, so un- untuk pengetahuan company yang buat DNA sequencing ada banyak dekat Malaysia ni yang mana dia dapat sampel even COVID-19 dia orang ambil sampel then they will sequence kan benda tu uh, so that we can get the uh, identity timing kalau tengok semua klinik ada hampir ke semua ada Uh, uh, testing punya COVID-19 test kan so they will uh, sequence it semua so uh, DNA sequencing company you can apply as a bioinformatics the thing is uh, most of them selepas diorang do sequence diorang uh, tak sure how to analyze so that's uh, another part which is uh, a company that do a bioinformatics uh, analysis dia, yang ni pula company ni pula dia tidak ada kena-mengena pun dengan DNA sequencing dia maybe tak ada technology of or machine of DNA sequencing tapi they know how to do Uh, uh, analysis, uh, maybe some of it uh, researcher or uh, uh, macam kita orang more to buy informatics analysis we didn't part, uh, touch of uh, DNA sequencing so jawapan saya yang secara conclusion untuk jawapan soalan ni adalah sebenarnya banyak cuma jangan focus on bioinformatics as a bioinformatics sebenarnya bioinformatics uh, bio, uh, biological anal- uh, sorry, biological analysis punya company yang buat biological analysis pun one of bioinformatics juga sebab dia akan guna bioinformatics uh, punya software uh, lagi apa lagi, ada banyak lah sebenarnya ada banyak, cuma google jangan google, just google bioinformatics uh, team, uh, term, just google something uh, term yang uh, kita ada DNA sequencing, kita ada uh, bioinformatics, uh, company buat bioinformatics company yang uh, buat uh, software programming itu kalau betul-betul nak cari bioinformatics tapi kalau as a full uh, apa, as a whole, as a bioinformatics student, kita belajar programming language and also biology Uh, kita boleh uh, 100% uh, masuk company yang 100% programming we can masuk 100% com- company yang biology we can go 100, uh, company that 100% do uh, statistic and etc so uh, ya yeah, sebenarnya banyak cuma most of kita orang ada dekat lembah kelang uh, kalau macam kamu duduk dekat Joh- uh, Johor pun di tengah membangun mungkin ada satu dua company tapi semua yang contoh saya berurusan semua company nya memang dekat dengan lembah kelang uh, and Selangor uh, tapi kalau macam kalau kat Pulau Pinang ke macam tu nak uh, untuk dapatkan job memang kena berhijrah ke ke KL dan Selangor lah untuk tu kalau betul tu nak fokus on start uh, tu ok tu je tapi untuk programming directly 100% programming mana-mana company ada even Pulau Pinang pun ada company yang 100% buat software developer ok tu, tu jawapan saya untuk tu lah ok terima okay. kasih sebab tanya ok, okay. so if you guys have any we still have a lot of time so you guys can just Right on the comment section. If there anything to ask, Muji Pahan, because we don't know we have we if we have another chance tomorrow or later on. So right now is the right time for us. Anything that still have in your heart. Okay, so uh, we can uh, next question. <laughs> okay, okay, so for nama mana sih? Okay, Muji Pahan. Saya baca Muji ya. Muji Pahan, kalau saya kurang berkebolehan dalam coding, apakah pilihan pekerjaan yang boleh saya cipuri? Tapi dilihat juga dengan banyak informasi. Okay, ini. Soalan pun saya memang nak tanya sebab uh, to be honest lah, jujur kan uh, kami semua yeah. kalau untuk uh, kalau kami, saya sekali sendiri saya memang lemah programming dan coding dan antara language okay. yang saya tak suka ialah C++ C++ okay. Java, Java tu boleh sikit lah C++ tu saya memang <laughs> suka lah dan saya tengok oh, dalam slide memang yeah, semua ada <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> jadi uh, kalau kami, saya, kalau saya pun uh, kami more to front end lah more to like design website and so on so Orang macam kami ni yang tak berapa power back end tapi mungkinlah boleh buat front end so mungkin mm-hmm. macam mana dalam company bioinformatics tu boleh survive? 
Okay. Okay. okay, terima kasih untuk soalan untuk soalan ni daripada Nurul Husna and uh, lagi sekali kepada moderator. Okay, so okay sekarang ni okay tak suka programming. Uh, maybe orang belajar tapi tak suka ataupun memang uh, pendedahan kepada programming itu kurang. Uh, jadinya, okay saya bagi satu contoh. Nasib baik saya ada contoh. Nasib saya ada contoh. Okay, <laughs> tak adalah. Uh, saya ada contoh. Okay, uh, saya ada satu kawan juga. Sebenarnya yang bekerja dekat Novocraft uh, during my batch, kita ada dua. Saya dengan kawan saya. Kita orang yang try nasib untuk masuk Novocra. Okey. Ah uh, so uh, macam kawan saya ni ah uh, dia pernah cerita kat saya dia macam lebih macam nilah macam ah uh, Cik Husna dia macam tak suka coding. Dia kurang minat. Eh ah uh, uh, macam moderator sorry macam moderator ah uh, macam lebih pada front end macam build software something build website kan. Okey ah uh, jadi kawan saya ni dia tak suka biologi tapi saya suka biologi dengan pro- programming. Jadi kita orang dua masuk Dekat Novocraft tu di sekarang dia adalah software developer. Dia tak dia tak touch pun uh, biologi sebab dia tak suka biologi. Uh, bukan tak suka dia macam kurang pendidahan lah tapi dia amat master dia untuk uh, front end punya uh, software devi- apa uh, website developer, software developer. Even yang interface yang uh, korang tengok dekat Novoworks, Novo Engine tu tu semua dari dia sebab uh, dari dia. Tapi saya yang install Novo Engine dalam tu. Maknanya saya install pipeline, biologi, analisis semua dalam tu. Back end tu saya lah install kan. So, okay untuk yang cik Us, itu untuk case moderator lah sebab dia tak suka, ada lebih pada dia suka programming yang uh, macam website semua tu. Untuk yang tak suka programming pula, okay apa yang orang boleh ceburi adalah tak payah masuk something yang ada kena-kena programming lah contohnya uh, uh, totally uh, bioinformatics, uh, biological punya uh, testing. Kebanyakannya dekat clinical and uh, clinic, sorry clinical tak, clinic and hospital they also ambil samuan yang ada uh, power of biology uh, bioinformatics which is uh, dia, dia tak perlu implement coding but they need to know how to handle uh, in user interface punya software a uh, maknanya macam contoh Novoworks tu okey sekarang ni saya, yang Novoworks tu uh, a okay, saya bagi contoh eh Novoworks tu adalah saya, yang saya buat adalah untuk orang yang tak pandai coding orang yang tak suka coding tapi dia pandai biologi dan dia agak uh, famous dan uh, most of company digunakan dorang sebab dorang tahu analisis uh, uh, contoh my genome uh, my genome uh, my genome is one of our customer dia kata dia okey untuk di, uh, di di apa di bagi tahu namanya so uh, dorang tahu uh, how to handle uh, analysis tapi uh, uh, most of bioinformatics tools they need programming so they have the knowledge uh, but uh, uh, there is no programming skill so a uh, chip Nur Husna boleh masuk dalam part yang macam tu maknanya dia buat bio, dia buat dia fokus on biology analysis cuma on the programming side dia macam just guna something yang user interface sebab kita orang memang tengah buat something yang uh, biological people tak tahu untuk biological people yang tak tahu programming yang user interface so okay tu satu yang masuk part yang biology okay uh, Husna juga boleh masuk part untuk statistik uh, sebab saya saya yakin setiap universiti dia akan ada ajar cara nak buat graph Uh, cari, uh, kita kena tahu knowledge untuk buat graph, knowledge untuk analysis data so that we can do a statistic. So we can be, do statistic also. So uh, there are so many. Uh, also uh, disebabkan bioinformatics tu dia ada calculation in contoh lah waktu saya UTM untuk kira percentage of mapping reach kita orang perlukan mathematic skill. So kita also sebenarnya boleh masuk dekat company yang implement any mathematic uh, skill. So No need to find something like uh, bioinformatics company. Just need to go to the company that have a uh, laboratory because they will use a bioinformatics yang dah dibuat oleh kami yang user interface. Faham? Uh. So actually bioinformatics ni, uh, yang totally bioinformatics ni orang yang develop, yang develop the software. So uh, biologi boleh guna. Uh, so okay, tu dia. Harap menjawab. Okay, thank you for the explanation. So Uh, we look, uh, we proceed to the next question if there are any question. So, okay, so from Hidaya. Okay. okay. Good evening, Cik Bahan. Can I know how much is the salary range of a bioinformatician as a fresh graduate? So, uh, just like uh, me, consider me lah after graduate uh, in 2022. Uh, we want to interview in mostly companies such as MGI, you know, Bokra. So, <laughs> at least, uh, what the minimum or the basic salary range that we are expected to during the interview. Uh, yeah, so the expected salary, okay, thank you. Thank, can you elaborate for us? Okay, thank you. Terima kasih uh, Nurul Hidayah. 
Ah uh, okey uh, about basic salary uh, saya tak boleh bagi saya punya tot specific basic salary tapi bila saya keluar uh, saya boleh bagi range a <laughs> uh, boleh ya boleh lah boleh lah okey saya habis je keluar a uh, saya uh, basic salary maybe 2500 ke 3500 untuk kita yang tak pernah ada skill bekerja tapi kita membawa bekalan daripada universiti a uh, 2000 2000 lah saya less case 2000 ke 3500 Maybe ada company yang during PKP diorang pun uh, before this diorang 2500 tapi diorang less kan diorang cut cost ke apa Maybe 2000 is very lim- uh, very minimum lah tapi still good uh, and can achieve up to 3500 uh, and up lah 4000 pun ada So dengan berbekalkan kita punya pembelajaran ini universiti kita tak ada skill uh, kerja lagi tau So 2500 and 3000 is good for us but when we have a Uh, experience later for me let's say I already have three years uh, I would like to try uh, another challenge I uh, so we have already experience so uh, that's where we can mark apa orang kata sell out sell our stuff maknanya kita mark up lagi harga kita contohlah contoh tapi tak good hmm. uh, <laughs> saya suka dengan double craft jangan bersuk <laughs> so uh, hmm. untuk tu lah saya nak menjawab lah 2500 2000 ke 3500 lah uh, then not less than yeah. 2000 hmm So okay, uh, let's wait uh, if any question from our friends. So before that, uh, I want to have a personal question. Okay, oh, so uh, from the slide, uh, actually, uh-huh. yeah, there are uh, two different, which is bioinformatician and the bioinformatics uh-huh. programmer. So can uh, Cik Pan elaborate what difference uh-huh. of bioinformatician and bioinformatician programmer? So is that suitable for us that don't like to coding? Uh, for oh, okay. okay, thank you. Okay, bioinformatician and bioinformatics programmer. Also, you ask in English, so I answer in English lah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, basically, uh, bioinformatics programmer. Okay, how I work is I am bioinformatics programmer. We have a bioinformatician also in Novocraft. Bioinformatician is the person uh, who know how the analysis, how the analysis are going from start until the end uh, they know uh, how to handle this type of analysis for example uh, i give example of uh, covid-19 uh, again yeah, my case study yet uh, before this so uh, this bioinformatician uh, he have a knowledge uh, maybe he do some uh, more literature review he read so many research papers so many journal so he familiar how the analysis going on tapi uh, they uh, either doesn't like to do a programming they know the theory tapi dia dah uh, dia tahu okay from the face ni nak bawa ke face mana nak bawa oh terbm pula from this face i uh, need to bring this face need, uh, need to pass the data to this face uh, until they we get the end result that is a bioinformatician they know the overall flow chart of the analysis but the bioinformatics programmer is the one that uh, we do the back end so since uh, we already refer to bioinformatician okay now we have some overview how this analysis are going uh, uh, how this analysis analysis and calculation will be going on so will be implemented in in our programming uh, script so i am the one who okay i know oh macam ni rupanya cara nak selesaikan masalah covid-19 ni kita kena buat pre processing we need to do Uh, uh, screening and classifying Okay, kita dah tahu daripada bioinformatician The one yang pakar bab tu Then, uh, sekarang bioinformatics programmer Dia akan out, uh, uh, dia akan buat The tools for itself The pipeline for itself With the correct parameter uh, Macam tu, so that is the difference So, uh, secara keseluruhannya jawapannya adalah Bioinformatician yang mostly dia tahu Most of analysis punya teori uh, Dari awal sampai habis And bioinformatics programmer is back end punya how they how implement so that it can be a working punya working punya tools faham ke okey faham faham okey okay, so faham. untuk orang uh, yang sekolah datang tahun 1 tahun 2 yang macam lemah dengan sebab macam saya saya pun sendiri masih lemah dengan sebab until now so korang jangan uh-huh. masih ada peluang lagi masih masa depan terbaik cerah lagi masih ada pilihan uh-huh. <laughs> okey so uh, is there any question next okey Uh, from okay, from Abdul Malik Ahmad Encik Farhan, opinion on integration of mobile development in bioinformatic fields Okay, ni macam advance sikit ni uh, Integration mobile development in bioinformatic So ada app mobile ke apa ni ah, macam Encik Farhan ada involved dalam projek macam ni ke? Okay, 
Oh, orang yang tanya ni pun actually memang ni pun saya kenal. Tak apa. Ah, uh, it's okay. Uh, so, ah, uh, good question Cik Malik. Ah, uh, I like your question. Thank you for your question. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, opinion on integration of mobile development in bioinformatics field. Ah, uh, as of now, in my experience, I didn't involve any ah uh, any bioinformatics in a mobile development yet. But there are uh, I forgot the example. There are some apps uh, that uh, use a bio inform uh, use a mobile app as a platform of bioinformatics. Most of it are uh, uh, the apps like uh, the communication between the doctor and patient directly. For example, uh, uh, the doctor suggestion, uh, the doctor apa, what we call it, uh, doctor doctor suggestion, doctor appointment, something like that, and uh, there are kind, that kind of uh, apps already in the market lah. And sekarang memang kami, uh, we are focusing on simplifying in a uh, apps instead of web because most of uh, the bioinformatics tools or bioinformatics pipeline or bioinformatics program required a super computer. Uh, what I mean is uh, need a computer instead of run inside uh, our phone. So uh that's uh the lacking right now but we are start to integrating uh the, the system whereby uh instead the analysis can be done in our computer but uh it will implement in uh, our phone so that user can do analysis in any way so uh my opinion so he asked about opinion it's good to have this kind of um bioinformatics in uh, an apps tapi it need a the development, uh, detail development so that uh, dia tidak melibatkan telefon kita lag semua sebab memang in my experience untuk buat analisis dia perlukan uh, something uh, RAM yang tinggi a bit uh, dan juga uh, processor yang tinggi supaya the process dia run cepat. So dan, tapi dari segi macam yang simple-simple punya uh, apps macam like yang saya mention before, communication between doctor and patient, suggestion between uh, doctor and patient tu pun also one branch of a bioinformatics lah tapi uh, which didn't use uh, large uh, resources tapi uh, yeah so my opinion it's good to have that and we as a novocraft are working on that i believe so that's all from me uh, for my for this question okay so thank you yeah. Han, for the okay. explanation and let's look uh, if uh, this is a last question maybe uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so from Navin Raj Muyadi, okay. This question actually, uh, Cipan already explained oh, before, yeah. but let's have a more, more detail because uh, this question is more specific because, uh, okay, let's read. Good afternoon, sir. Could you suggest a government company, okay, government institution that offers job as a information? Okay, so this is more, uh, just now, Cipan uh, explained uh, for, for general company. Right now, it's more specific yeah. for government company. Maybe the student, uh, a JPA student, what, uh, Discount for scholarship, right? Uh, maybe uh, so. Okay, okay. 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 Peace, uh, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you for the question, uh, Mr. Navin. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I have uh, introduced some government linking, uh, GSC government link company, uh, which is MGI and uh, IMR, uh, which is uh, these two I, I mentioned earlier. <laughs> Basically, if you want totally government, KKM also can, uh, KKM. Uh, they also have uh, DNA sequencing punya analysis tau. I mean DNA analysis. Uh, we also have uh, any, if you want, any related uh, uh, apa? hospital, government hospital also can. Most of comp uh, most of hospital have their macam orang kata apa, department. They have their own department that do a bioinformatics analysis thing. Not, not like when we go to the a hospital we uh, of course we will be a doctor or nurse not but we have something like uh, the researchers uh, the researcher the research uh, behind them any government uh, hospital if you want uh, any uh, KKM uh, any KKM sorry KKM have one KKM they have their branch that focusing on this bioinformatics because this is uh, quite useful nowadays uh, as I mentioned even COVID-19 KKM also uh, uh, they also use uh, bioinformatics skill in order to solve uh, this kind of uh, problem. So, yeah, uh, I, I finalize again. We have J, uh, MGI, Malaysian Genome Institute, uh, IMR, Institute of Medical Research, uh, 
any hospital link uh, government like PPM uh, apa Pusat Perubatan Universiti Melaya, Melaya uh, contoh uh, Kementerian Kesihatan Malaysia uh, some of my friends also work uh, with Kementerian uh, Kesihatan Malaysia in Johor uh, kalau tu boleh lah kalau kerja kat tu sebab dia KKM tu ada ada banyak kan kat even Terengganu Pahang pun ada so uh, ada kat Johor dia kerja as a KKM as a bioinformatics juga uh, lagi Ha, beberapa lah so mana-mana government yang supply medik, most of them ada satu team yang bioinformatics. Ha, they ha, they need to have that. So yeah, I hope I answer your question, Mr. Navin Raj. Alright. Okay, thank you for the explanation, uh, Cik Bahan. So I think okay. uh, that's enough for five question only. I think five question already enough for the yeah. session. So yeah, job, okay, job, job, job. let's. Uh, uh, Thank you, Cibar, for your great explanation. Now we already see a bigger picture about what is bioinformatics and how the industry really works. So I, I hope know. this session give uh, a lot of benefit for us and everyone mm. will attend this session. So if yeah. you guys have a link in, you guys can follow Far uh, Encik Farhan in uh, the name is Farhan Tahi in LinkedIn. So if you guys oh. want to contact, want to yeah, yeah. want to ask yeah. about internship, yeah. right? A tip, several uh, tips. Email pun boleh? Uh, ah, yeah, email, email. Email Farhan uh, at Ovocraft, yes. At gmail.com. Eh, at Ovocraft.com, right? Ah, I'm sorry. Okay. So, okay, okay. before I finish, I would like to remind again, uh, don't forget to click uh, the link to register, get the certificate from us at the end of the session, uh, maybe at the end of the session. So, uh, before I finish, uh, I would like to apologize if there are any uh, inconvenience during this session. Uh, okay. So uh, now I give the floor back to our beloved MC, Nolisa Kamila. Thank you.